We are now joined by the other half of our main event, number nine ranked UFC heavyweight, Walt Harris. Hi, Walt. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. We'll take the first question from Nolan King with MMA Junkie. Nolan, go ahead. Hey, Walt. How's it going, man? I appreciate the time today. And uh, here we are, fight week. Um, you know, everything that you've been through in the past couple of months, the pandemic that's going on, now that you're here ahead of the biggest fight of your life, can you put into words what the emotions are coming into this one? Um, excitement, man. Um, you know, I think it's been a long time coming. Um, it's, this is a fight I've been looking forward to for, I mean, honestly, since I was an amateur. Um, I've watched Overeem before I ever started fighting. So to get in there and, and be in the same conversation with it, with him is, is uh, something that I've always worked for and worked towards. So Saturday night, I'm going in there to, to put on a show for the world, man. We're the only sport, so it's going to be fun. I can't wait. And I know adversity is nothing new for you. You've had to, to kind of deal with a lot of issues throughout your whole career. But looking back on this camp, do you feel like the adversity that you, you were, uh, you know, you encountered, you were able to overcome? And, and are you feeling pretty confident about the product you're going to put out on Saturday? Oh, for sure. My confidence is at an all-time high. Um, you know, you, like you alluded to, I mean, the adversity that I've gone through in my life, fighting is just a fight. You know what I mean? Um, I face something that, you know, no father should ever have to face. So I feel like you know, fighting is just something that I'm doing and it's I'm good at and um, and then I put my heart into. So I'm going to go in there and perform and do what I do best, man, and uh, let the chips fall where they may. Right now in the heavyweight division, it's kind of an interesting time. It seems like there's a, a lot of contenders at the top. There's a little bit of a log jam. Mm -hmm. uh, with the win over Overeem, where do you think that puts you in the division? Do you feel like you're going to be in that conversation for – you know, either one or, 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 you know, one fight away from a title or kind of in that conversation? I see I see it being one fight away, um, you know, but um, I always prided myself on being a company man. So if the UFC wants me to step up and take an interim title, I would definitely do it. Um, I feel like mentally in this space where I'm at in my career, I'm so ready for whatever, um, you know, and I'm prepared to, to fight whoever the division has to offer or whoever the UFC has to offer. Um, I feel like I'm a mad, I'm a bad matchup for all of those guys, and I match up well with all those guys. So, um, you know, I think it's my time to shine, and Saturday night I plan on proving that. My last question for you, uh, Alistair Overeem is a guy that's been around for a long time. We've seen him come out in fights and give a lot of different looks. Uh, what are you expecting to see out of him come Saturday, and, and what should fans expect to see out of you? Um, I think from him I'm going to see a, you know, guy who's going to try to, you know, grind me, um, push me against the cage, you know, uh, grapple drag the fight to the deep rounds and, you know, try to try to hang on. Um, with me, you're going to see the same me, you know, explosive, athletic, um, but with a renewed vigor. Uh, my focus has been laser sharp, you know, since uh, the tragedy. You know, I'm, I'm fighting for a different purpose. Um, so, you know, and, and my daughter is, is with me every everywhere I go. So when you got something like that pushing you, man, I, you know, I, right now at this point in my career, I feel like I can run through a brick wall. So. Um, he's going to be facing a dangerous man on Saturday night for sure. Appreciate the time, man. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll go to James Lynch from The Score. James, go ahead. Hey, well, uh, Nolan touched there on, on sort of everything you got going into this fight. How much are you feeding off the support you've had over the last few months, not just from the MMA community, but from everyone in general? Oh, man, it's it's everything, bro. It gets me out of bed in the morning, to be honest. Um, you know, so many people have done so many things for myself and my family it's just um it's overwhelming at times you know i'm so grateful i'm so thankful for you know everybody from everybody at the ufc to my neighbors my community my community has been amazing um you know and that's that's something that is like i said you know it, it makes for a dangerous fighter when you realize that so many people love you and love you and are concerned about you and your family. It gives you more more to fight for. Um, it gives you more energy and training. It gives you more uh, focus, you know. And so that's where I'm at with it, man. I'm just excited. Can't wait. And we spoke to Eric Anders earlier. This is the first time you guys have fought on a card together, I think, since both of you, since he was an amateur. Um, what does it mean to be a part of this big card, be the main event, and also have Eric there right with you? Man, it, it's um, it's special, man. I remember the first day of camp, I told him, I said, bro, it's about to be an awesome camp, you know, because we're always kind of either I'm fighting before him or he's fighting after me. And so we kind of like hit and miss each other during camp. But we spent every every day together. And, um, you know, we've always been close. So it's really special to to be able to fight on a car with him and be the headliner. You know, it's something that I've always dreamed of being, uh, you know, in the UFC, being a headliner, being a main event. 
and to have my little brother on the car with me is 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 extra motivation because that dude works so hard, you know. So he pushes me, and um, you know, it, it's just you know I got to prove something to him too. So I want to make him proud as well. And both of you spent some time at Extreme Couture earlier this year. How much of a benefit was that heading into a big fight like this? Oh man, it's dope. Uh, you know, Coach Eric Nixie is just he's my boy. So when we go out there, it's all love. Um, it's you know, it's just like being at home. It's just with a bunch more guys who got the same, you know, mindset and the same motivation as you. So when we are in Vegas, um, we're working 110%, you know, uh, just like we're at home, man. It's just, it's, it's awesome. It's really good. It's highly unlikely this fight goes the distance. I think there's going to be a finish here. If you do, do get that knockout victory and Nolan sort of touched on it there, uh, do you feel like that puts you in the title picture right now or at least close to it just because uh, that would be five fight unbeaten streak for you right now? Yeah, I definitely feel like, um, you know, a win over Overeem is going to thrust me in the conversation for sure. I think people have been clamoring for it. Um, there's certain people that uh, my name gets tossed around on social media and uh, different outlets with. Um, so I think it's, it's I'm at that time now. It's time to make those fights happen. So a win over Overeem definitely puts me in the conversation. Two quick ones for me. How much are you missing hockey right now? Bro, you have all oh, Jennings. You know, bro, I'm sick right now, man. I, the last hockey game I went to, was in DC and I had a blast. I got to meet Ovechkin and, you know, it was just like the highlight of my life, man. So I'm, I'm struggling right now. I've been watching a lot of old games, a lot of old Penguins games. That's cool. What was it like meeting Ovechkin? Did he give you any advice or anything? I mean, we're talking about a Stanley Cup champion here. Yeah, I mean, he just kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, you know, I'm gonna be candid right now. My knees buckled when it, when he walked in. I, I was turned around, I was talking to, uh, to, to Tom, uh, what's his name? I forget, I'm sorry. <laughs> But I was talking to him. We were t we were hanging out in the locker room. He was showing me all the lockers and stuff like that. And Ovechkin walked up and tapped me on my shoulder with a jersey with my name on it. And bro, my knees buckled. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I freaked out. He he thought it was super dope because I knew who he was. I was telling him about all these different games. We just kind of chopped it up, talked hockey, you know. And uh, it was pretty cool, man. I got to meet all of them. Nicholas Backstrom, everybody, man. It was dope. And last question, that TikTok video with you and Eric Anders playing Rock'em Sock'em. How much money did you win from him? I think I uh, hit for like 250. Excellent. That's good, Walt. Enjoy it. Of course, I didn't keep any of that. That was all prop money. <laughs> that was like a little pot everybody threw in somebody. I didn't get to keep it. Best of luck on Saturday, Walt. Thanks for the time. Next, we'll go to Damon Martin from MMA Fighting. Damon, go ahead. Uh, and Dana White. Dana White talked about it yesterday about going into a fight like this. You, the entire world is kind of behind you going into this fight for, for obvious reasons. But how do you balance that emotion? Because at the end of the day, this is a fight. I mean, you know, you got to go out and fight one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Like, how do you how do you balance that in your head? Um, you know, I, I'm a pretty even killed guy. I've been competing my whole life. Um, you know, when it comes to you know athletics, it's just something that I do. I have a switch. Um, I know I know how to control those emotions based on the fact that, you know, it, it, like you said, it's a fight. And um, I alluded to it earlier. I've been through so much in my life that, you know, I prepared for this. This is what I'm here to do. So um, I'll be 110 percent focused. And I think the no crowd actually is, is, a, is a benefit in this situation because, you know, there's no outside distractions, um, especially this week. I've been kind of isolated. I've been with my team and we've just been focusing on making sure I'm primed and ready for Saturday night. You know, you mentioned it in terms of like, you know, the, the, the entire world kind of feels behind you and you two months. What does that mean to you? To, you've always been a fan favorite guy anyways in your career, but just because, you know, obviously stylistically you have a very fan favorite style, but the support you've been showing, this, what does that mean to you? It means everything, man. Um, you know, it's overwhelming um, to think that, you know, so many people are, are sharing their love, whether it be through social media text uh, or phone text or you know, people popping and stopping by the house with gifts or, you know, food and things like that, man. It means so much to, to know that people are behind you and that they're proud of you and that they're, you know, supporting you. It gives you um, incentive that you're doing the right things and, and incentive to keep doing the right things. Be a role model. You mentioned it earlier, Overeem, you know, we know him you know, as, a, as a very dominant striker in his own right, but we have seen him grind guys out. He was doing it very well before he got caught in that fifth round. Obviously, you've got a ton of first round finishes, but how confident are you going into those deeper rounds? This does go into round four and five. Oh, super confident. Um, my coach, Chris Conley, has put me through the ringer this camp. Um, you know, he's made sure I'm prepared in every facet of the game. 
Um, we've worked every angle, every aspect. Um, we've dissected every way that we feel like Overeem has any kind of advantages, and we've gone in and made sure I'm on point. And I'm sharp as I've ever been, man. Like, it, it's insane. Like, I get excited in, in, in the workouts because I'm just like, man, I, I can feel a different type of energy um, surrounding, you know, not only the fight, but just my, my overall being, man. I feel like I'm 24 again, you know what I mean? It's crazy. So, um, you know, I'm prepared to go wherever the fight goes, bro, wherever it goes. And you mentioned to me a couple of weeks ago that one of your dream fights in the future would be to throw hands with a guy like Francis Ngannou, a guy I know you have a lot of respect for. You train with him. Obviously, seeing what Francis did this past weekend, he's kind of stuck in a in a situation now where he doesn't have an opponent. You know, we don't know when the title fight's coming. I think I, think I saw you on Instagram saying you would love to see Jones fight, but in a, in a world in a good scenario, like you win this weekend, is that a, is that a fight you would like to pursue? For sure. I mean, it's it's inevitable. I mean, Francis is at the top of the division. He's right right there. So I mean, we're gonna have to lock horns at some point. Um, you know, and. Like I said, I feel like I match up with everybody in this division very well. So if that's what the UFC wants and needs, then that's what's going to happen, and I'll be 110% prepared for it. Thanks, Walt. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Jay Anderson with Cage Side Press. Jay, go ahead. Thanks, Walt, and uh, welcome back. Uh, condolences, obviously. Congratulations on the return. Was there a moment uh, sort of in your head at some point that said, you know what, I've got to get back, I've got to get back to fighting? Yeah, um, I went through a dark, dark period, as you, you know, you probably could already imagine. And um, it just, uh, I felt myself slipping the opposite direction of what I set out to to be as a man and, and as a father. And I just had a talk with my wife one day and she was like, you know what, why don't you start back training and try to get your mind off of it? Because there was a point, honestly, where I felt like thinking of anything but my daughter was wrong. Um, I battled that so hard. I was like, if I go back to fighting, am I, am I not thinking of her? Am I not doing the right thing by her? But, um, you know, I prayed about it and I could hear her tell me, Daddy, I want you to go back. I want you to fight. This is what, you know, we worked so hard. I sacrificed so much. Mom sacrificed so much. You sacrificed so much um, to get to where you are. And, you know, I would be more upset with you if you stopped fighting. And that's when I went back in the gym and I started focusing on getting back in shape. And... I just kind of put a goal out there of when I wanted to fight just to kind of give myself some incentive, you know what I mean? Some motivation outside of, you know, what I already had. And uh, I kind of told the UFC March or April. And then we went from there, man. And I just started focusing like I was about to fight in March and I started training with my butt off every day. And then, you know, fights fell through, pandemic happened and I just kept training and I kept going and, you know, we got this fight. So, um, you know, I'm grateful and I'm ready, man. And, you know, you, you talked about, you know, almost thinking that not thinking or doing anything other uh, than thinking about her was wrong. But, I mean, you're still you're still obviously keeping your memory alive and you've worked on Anaya's Law. And I'm wondering if you could just uh, speak a little about that movement and where that stands. Um, so, I mean, of course, with the pandemic, we hit a bit of a snag, but um, we were working on a law called Anaya's Law, which would make sure violent offenders aren't allowed bond. And um, it's a bipartisan effort in the state. I mean, both sides came together like that. This this bill went, it flew through the, the uh, judicial system uh, so fast that it, it was kind of overwhelming to watch. You know, I was sit, I went to all the meetings and I met all the, the lawmakers and uh, kind of got to see how the process worked. And we were very close to getting the bill passed and going to Senate, but then the pandemic happened. So, um, What's going to happen when everything opens back up and everything clears back up, they're going to reintroduce the bill. I think it's going to go through the same uh, process pretty quickly. And then hopefully we'll have the law uh, before 2020 is over and um, other states will grab it and, and, and enact it as well to protect people, you know. Um, so that's where we're all with that. Yeah, that's a fantastic effort. And just one more for me. What's this fight week been like for you uh, mentally coming back from something like that? And then just as well with the pandemic and, you know, you don't have the, the fans there and the same activities you might normally. Uh, it's been great, honestly. I mean, I got my squad here, man. We're pretty deep. We're about nine deep. Um, you know, all my closest brothers that I train with and I ground with every day. So it's, it's pretty routine outside of the fact that, you know, there's not a lot of people, which is actually probably a really good thing in my case. Um, so, you know, we just been kind of doing what we normally do, training, working, you know, having fun, cutting up, laughing and, um, 
you know, keeping the same fight week demeanor that we always do that's led us to be successful to this point. So, um, you know, nothing's really changed, you know. All right, well, best of luck uh, this Saturday. Thanks very much. Thank you. Next, we'll take Shaquille from MMA Mania. Shaquille, go ahead. Well, my sincerest condolences. Thanks for making the time today, man. Thank you. Uh, you know, you were talking about that passing that bill. What does it mean to you and your family to think that, you know, should it get through and get adopted by the other states, this tragic situation could have a long-term, in your eyes, beneficial impact on the entire country? It mean a lot, man. Um, you know, it'd be the first big step into keep in keeping our daughter's name alive and, um, you know, what she stood for alive. Um, we're, we're working on so many different things in her honor. Um, but the bill would be the capstone, you know, for everything. It, it it mean, you know, protecting people, you know, that's just ultimately what our society should be based on. We should be, we should feel protected and not be afraid to, uh, to live, you know, freely. And um, I think that, you know, especially in females cases, I think they need to be protected and, and, and have understanding of how to be safe. And so we're working on a lot of different things in that arena to make sure other people don't face the, the tragedy and uh, the devastation that we faced. Uh, and last thing on your daughter, the preliminary hearing got pushed back a couple times, and now with the COVID pandemic, uh, how frustrating has that part been? And do you think it's going to go through on June third at this rate? Um, you know, I'm praying and staying uh, hopeful that it will. Um, you know, it, it's been super stressful. You know, just to kind of have justice delayed this way. But um, you know, I'm a firm believer that God does everything for a reason, and there's an there's a silver lining in this. Um, you know, He ain't going anywhere, so. Um, we just have to, you know, wait it out and, and, and stay diligent and just keep making sure we're staying focused on uh, keeping her in the forefront. You know, um, you know, that's that's just mainly what me and my wife are, are focusing on and our team back home is just making sure we're doing all the things we need to do as parents on our end to make sure, um, you know, people don't forget about her. Thank you for your candor. Uh, to talk about the fight a little bit, you know, there's this idea with heavyweights, especially the older heavyweights, Overeem, Marlovsky, you know, they, they get quote unquote chinny, they're washed, they can't handle it. And then, you know, Marlovsky comes back and wins. Overeem wins 24 minutes and 59 seconds of his last fight. Uh, what do you think is the biggest misconception that people have about the heavyweight division? Um, I don't know, man. I think that, you know, people think that we don't work hard or, you know, we're lazy or whatever, whatever the case may be. But, um, you know, we're, we're heavies. I mean, we're big guys, so everything's not going to look like the small guys all the time. It's not going to be a firefight, you know. Um, and then, you know, those guys that you mentioned are savvy veterans, so they understand how to how to get to certain points in fights and win fights and try to get to what they do best. So you got to be prepared for that, you know, and I think I am prepared for that. Um, come Saturday night, we'll be ready. And last thing for you, uh, the – crowdless ambience has had an interesting impact on the last couple of events, whether it's Daniel Cormier accidentally giving out instructions to fighters or maybe Anthony Smith's corner giving too much advice or someone like Eubanks who was actually talking trash to her opponent's corner mid-fight. Uh, how has, like, how do you expect to make the most of this new environment? Um, you know, I, I'm just going to soak it all in, man, and, and just, uh, you know, find that peace in it. You know what I mean? Um, it, I think that when you when you take the negatives out of things and, and, and accentuate the positive, that's when you shine. So that's just my always been my mentality. It's always the way I think. So I'm just going to use – I'm going to think of it as me being on the prelims. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I will go in there and I will do my job and I'm going to come out of there with that W. Okay, well, thank you. Best luck on your fight and well wishes to you and your family. Thank you. All right, and lastly, we'll go to Alistair Bishop from MMA Republic in South Africa. Alistair, go ahead. My name's Alistair. I don't know if I want to talk to you, bro. Why, why, why? Don't be like that. Your name's Alistair, bro. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All the way from South Africa. How are you, sir? Thank you, brother. Thank you. Good. Fantastic. Condolences firstly to you and your family, man, and uh, hopefully you've got a, a good night ahead of you to, to really uh, stamp your authority back on the division. Yes, sir. So uh, what I really want to ask you is, Obviously, we, we just saw uh, Francis Ngannou put on a, a massive display. Obviously, being an African brother, that's who, we, who we're really watching um, back from South Africa. But I, I want to ask you, where do you think you fit into the picture here now with uh, Curtis Blades, Francis Ngannou, uh, and yourself if you get a win? Obviously, not looking past Alistair Overeem 
Um, just, just where do you see yourself in, in, in that picture? Um, I, I feel like I belong in conversation with all those guys. Um, you know, I feel like I'm one of the most talented heavyweights in the entire division. And I feel like, um, you know, when I went over Alistair, it's going to thrust me right there in the middle of all of that. And um, I'm prepared to fight any one of those guys you name. Um, I feel like, you know, it's my time to be in that conversation. I've worked hard. I've been through a lot in my career, ups and downs, battled adversity. So I think it's my time to shine, man, and show the world what I'm, I'm truly capable of. I'm hitting my prime right now, so I'm excited. Fantastic. And looking up the division, watching a guy like Francis Ngannou put on a display like he did, what are your initial thoughts to, to that kind of a display? Oh, it's impressive, man. I mean, I called it, you know, to be honest. I, I feel like Francis is a – I trained with him. I mean, the dude's a, a monster, man. He's huge. And, um, you know, he, he's he's got a lot to prove himself. I mean, he was off for 19 months, so I, I kind of saw him coming into that fight very aggressive and looking to finish fast and prove a point, and he did exactly that, man. So big ups to, to, to Francis, man. I cool with his whole team. So, you know, that's just uh, – it was awesome to watch, honestly. Awesome. Looking, looking at uh, Alistair Overeem and, and the, the style of fight he's been adopting lately um, as he's gotten on his career, you know, when, when fans watch heavyweights, obviously they, they, they want to see the big knockouts and that doesn't always come. Do you, do you feel pressure to, to really hunt for that knockout, to really say, okay, I'm here in this division and, and I'm the next title contender? Um, no, not really hunt for it. Um, you know, I've learned throughout my career that hunting for it, it never comes. Um, you kind of got to let it come to you. And um, I feel like I'm a guy that read and, and reads and reacts very well in the fight. And that's where my knockouts come from. So, um, you know, I'm just going to go in there and be me and do me and let the knockout appear. When I see it, I'm going to take it for sure. I'm going to try to finish the fight. That's what I do. Um, but I'm definitely not – I don't feel any pressure or, you know, anything. I just need to go in there and get this done, you know what I mean, and, and make it look good, which I plan on doing. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time and Thank all the you, best. Bro. Thank you. All right. Well, that's it. You are all set. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining us for today's virtual media day. Again, UFC Fight Night Overeem versus Harris is live from ViStar Veterans Memorial Arena on ESPN and ESPN Plus this Saturday with prelims beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Also, a reminder, if you haven't already, to register for Saturday's virtual post-fight sessions. Thank you.